Hello sports fans, so today we're going to be taking a look at our chains, how to ensure they're the correct length and how to fit a new one. This is really important to optimise both performance and safety. For this video, all you're going to need is a chain breaking tool as well as a brand new chain. You do have the optional luxury of some quick link pliers, but they're not strictly necessary. Now, when we're replacing our chain, we can potentially cut it to the same length. But before we go rushing in with our golden ticket to drivetrain bliss, how do we know that this chain is the right length to begin with? What we don't want to do is go off a chain that is incorrect and then potentially cut a new chain too short. So the way I like to do it is we go off a thing called B tension. So B tension is basically how far away, it's the adjustment that affects how far away that top jockey wheel sits from the teeth of the cassette. Now, B tension isn't a substitute for chain length, but it's kind of a set and forget, and it's really important to get it correct the first time. So the best way to do this, or my preferred way, is I go into the second largest cog at the back, and we're gonna look through and want those teeth of the kind of top of the jockey wheel just maybe a millimeter or two away from kissing the teeth of the largest cog. This means when you ride up into that biggest cog, that lowest gear, it's gonna be nice and clear of each other. If you're getting a as you go through the cassette, it means that there isn't enough B tension. But conversely, if you have too much and there is a country mile between the two, that is gonna have an adverse effect on performance. And like I said, B tension is not a substitute for correct chain length. Now on this bike, the chain length is actually already pretty good. There are two main ways you can visually inspect to see if the chain length is indeed correct. The first way is you go into your largest cog and your biggest one at the front, if you've got a double or a triple, this is when the system is under its most tension and you want to make sure that the chain line is kind of perpendicular to the ground. The other way, and personally my preferred way, is when you go into the smallest cog at the back and the smallest cog at the front, yet again, if you're winning a double or a triple, and this is where the system is under its most slack and you want to make sure it's just coming under tension there. Now, why would you want to run as much slack as possible? Surely, Devil's Avocados would say that you actually want the shortest chain possible to keep vibration to a minimum. However, full suspension bikes undergo a thing we call chain growth. Now, what does this term mean? Well, it means as the bike goes into its travel, the wheelbase of the bike extends, putting more tension onto the system. So if you have the chain as short as possible, when you go into the bike's travel, it can actually really have a detrimental effect on your suspension's performance, which is obviously what we don't want, and under a large compression, especially in these bigger cogs at the back, you could either rip a mech clean off or snap a chain, which is gonna leave you up a certain type of creek without a paddle. Now, as we can see, when it's in its smallest cog at the back and the system is under the least amount of tension it will be under, it's actually still just taking some load there, lifting the chain off that front jockey wheel. This is really, really important. If the chain is grounding out on that jockey wheel there, it's not under enough tension. Now, please do this sensibly. Don't go cutting once and worrying about it later, but as the old adage goes, measure it twice, measure it three times, there are no excuses not to take it step by step and ensure it's the correct length. Now, how long should a chain last? Well, there are huge amounts of variables. How you use your gears, what you lube them with, where you ride will all have an effect on the life of your chain. Now, there isn't really a way to inspect it by eye. You do need a chain wear tool. Those tools are really good and they can actually premeditate when you are gonna start wearing out those cogs at the back. Anything over 0.75 is getting into the territory where these will be so sufficiently worn that a new chain will slip on them. 
So if it's above 0.75, really start considering to swap out of that chain. Sometimes it's even 0.05, but check with your chain manufacturer. So first things first, let's remove this chain. Now there are two ways to do this. We can either use quick link pliers to just snip that one and open it up, or if we're throwing the chain away anyway, we can use a set of chain breakers. To make your life easier, put the clutch on the rear mech. So we pull the cage forward and just activate that little button there. This gives us plenty of slack to work with. And using our pliers here, it's gonna snap it open. And we can pull this chain like so. And if we lift it behind the cassette, we can actually just pull it up there. So this is our brand spanking new chain. Now a couple of things to really note here. First of all, this is a correct speed for the system. A 12 speed chain going on a 12 speed cassette. Secondly, some chains, mainly Shimano, are directional. So they do it so that the writing is facing out towards you on the drive side. I personally like to start at the front so we can get it correctly meshed in with our narrow wide chain ring if you're running a one by you can just drive it around there if you've got a chain device you want to just gently feed it through there we go i like to pull so i've got a bit of slack just because there's nothing more annoying than pulling the chain as you get it through the cage here and then it comes off this end the next thing is rookie error time please make sure it goes the correct way. Uh, the amount of times I've seen people loop it over there, under here, you know, just get it going nicely through the stay. And we're going to drop our chain in straight through and down the jockey wheels of the derailleur cage. Now, something that's also really worth noting, it's a bit of a rookie error, and pretty much every mechanic in the world has done it at some point is you accidentally, there's a little plate here and some people accidentally root the chain in front of that plate, if you can imagine. And what that means is, although it might shift, it might work, it's gonna make a hell of a lot of noise and it's incorrect and it will cause you problems later down the line. This will recoil like a desert eagle. So go easy, let it go gently, otherwise what will happen is you'll get a load of flick in the chain, probably lose an eye, it will just be a disaster. So please be sensible. And then we're going to visually line up which part of the chain we break. So if you imagine along here, I've got the inner plates and the quick link acts as two outer plates. So I'm looking to break the chain at another set of inner plates such as that there. Now, Please, I'd rather you do this kind of twice and get it done properly than just going too short out of some rush. We've got plenty of time. So if I was to do it to that one, well, that's gonna be too loose. I can tell you that straight away. So the next one we're gonna go to isn't this one, but it's actually this one. Cause like I said, the quick links replace this outer part of the chain, those outer plates. So we're gonna break the chain there. That is, that's the one. I'm not gonna remove my hands from there, you know, you can prise this chain out of my cold dead fingers. I'm not gonna lose that link. So once you've got it, please don't lose it. And we're gonna put our chain into our chain breaking tool and just drive it through. With your chain breaking tools, please make sure that it's sat in there properly, maybe check the instructions. There's actually a lot of force you're putting through quite a small rivet there. So what you don't want to do is leave it so the chain isn't actually slotted incorrectly, whichever orientation it is, and it can basically damage your tool, which is, well, it's a bit of a nuisance, really. I'm actually gonna put the clutch back on on this SRAM system to make sure it's all good. And just gently, one at a time, putting these quick links on, and obviously on different sides, and we're just going to very gently, we're not, we don't feel we need to snap it yet. We just need to hold it yet again, holding the chain just so, and gently, 
is the important bit. Let that clutch take up the slack. And well, I'll be, that looks pretty good already. So I want to really make sure that this quick link is, you know, engaged properly. Now, what's the best way to do that? Some plies can force it back there, pulling the quick link apart. My personal way to do it is actually to spin the wheel, so just gently going through the gears. And once that quick links, you're gonna hear it click through the jockey wheels there. There's one, two, and then over the cassette. And here it is here. And by holding the rear tire and applying a moderate amount of force to the crank, it just pops in. Something I would suggest doing, and it's really, really can pay dividends when you're installing a brand new chain, to absolutely confirm beyond any reasonable doubt that is correct, it can be worth letting the pressure out your shock or maybe removing it entirely and cycling the bike through its travel to make sure the chain, whilst in that largest cog at the back, isn't gonna cause you any problems or limit the drivetrain's movement in any way. And hey presto, what do you know? I have a brand spanking new chain ready to rip on my bike. Now, if that quite hasn't satisfied your appetite for maintenance videos, click down here to see a really comprehensive tubeless setup where I go through the whole process from start to finish. And if that sounds quite up your street, I actually serviced this very shock in real time in front of your very eyes. So do check out that video there and we talk you through the whole process. As always, thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and get into the comments below to let me know how you've got on and perhaps there's something I've missed. Cheers guys.